welcome to Talking in Stations, a podcast about EVE Online. I am Matt Arell here with McLeod. How are you doing? Hey, dude. Uh, we're also joined by all of CCP because we're going to talk about Zenith Quadrant 3. Uh, and it's a great hour uh, for you on what's going to happen, what's coming up next. And we will start with some introductions. Uh, first, I'll start with our player guest, Sutonia. How are you doing, Sutonia? Hey, good to be here. All right, we'll talk to brand manager, CCP Oracle. Hi, really nice to be here. You guys know CCP Rise, senior game designer, uh, CCP Signal, software engineer, CCP Psych, lead systems designer, and of course, CCP Convict, the community developer. Hello, everyone, and welcome. All right, now normally we were going to see a trailer here of Zenith. Uh, we're not able to see that, are we? Oh, yes, we are, matter all. <laughs> oh, yeah. You just need to Rabbit stall for like 30 more seconds. We'll take a look at that trailer, and then we'll come back and talk to CCP Psych about the trailer and more. OK, like maybe 30 more seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect day to have a stream. For people who haven't seen it, it's a uh, it's pretty it's pretty sexy looking uh, trailer, I have to say. I will say uh, we'll start to discuss it, and then we can bring it up. Um, there is some confusion about what the point of view of the video is shot from, or where it comes from. I don't know if that's by design or not, uh, but we're trying to figure out: is that a capsuleer talking? Is that a triglavian talking? Is that like who's the we? That's very mysterious. So. Well, it's, it's ready, so shall I run away with it? Yeah, let's look for it. We were awakened. Our existence was empty. Our destinies stagnant. And we pulled on the thread. We witnessed their might, their domain, their vision. We brought them into our world, tested ourselves against them, because that is our nature. We are sleeping giants. We can shape our universe, control it. as one star descends, another will rise. Great, thanks. Uh, so I was wondering, um, Oracle, if you could tell us a little bit about the, uh, the trailer. Yeah, this is definitely a bit different than we did with the trailer before. But this is this quadrant and also this video is to set, you know, start the quadrant off. And this is going to be uh, the pinnacle of the invasion and the Triclavian's plans and just the culmination of everything, everything that's been set in motion. And that's what Zenith or Zenith relates to. It's a culmination or something at its most powerful. And obviously, as you've experienced, capsuleers will have a huge part to play in uh, how this all develops and what lasting impact it might have uh, or might leave on, on New Eden. Um, this is the third quadrant, quadrant, and we've been learning a lot. And 
getting better each time. And I think the key thing uh, here is to work with a consistent cadence and under an overarching theme and uh, just set the tone for, for what's coming, essentially. And I, I think this trailer really does that, although it, it is very different and there is some speculation, but I'm, I'm not going to. I think it's great that people are speculating about what, mm -hmm. who's talking or, or what's about. Um, is that part of the plan? <laughs> Be mysterious? Who knows, but, yeah, exactly. Um, but I, I think it really sets the tone for essentially the season. And we don't, the same with all the things that are coming in this quadrant. We're not releasing all the fun stuff right away. Um, there's a lot also in the hands of the players on how it develops. But the, there's a lot of events coming up and celebrations and a lot of uh, meta changes, balance changes and, and gameplay changes that are going to be very interesting. Some of them we're going to talk about here today, and that's why we have all these awesome developers with us. Yeah. we got a full house today, so let's... Uh... Talk about this new quadrant and what's going to appear in it. Uh, what feature is going to be the the main feature of this one, and which who should we talk to about that? Definitely, that's the one we're kicking off with. The proving grounds. Uh, All right, CCP and I was muted for that, so the stream didn't hear me. Only you did. Oh, did I only? Okay, okay. Yeah, we're kicking up with uh, the Proving Grounds, episode Proving Grounds elements, and CCP signal, and CCP <laughs> content often do the best people talk about that feature. All right, can we start there, uh, Steve? Can we start about Proving Grounds, and um, can you tell us what, what's involved there? Sure, I can start. Uh, so it would be uh, started at the beginning when... Uh, so I just finished working on the Frigate Escape Bay and the Wartown Projector, known as the Sappy Boy weapon system. And I was, I had like a week before I would go on paternity leave, two months. So I started out prototyping uh, from the, so like from my experience uh, working on the Needlejack or Reindeer filaments, using those building blocks in my prototype, getting it rapidly up to, you know, send people to fight in the old proving ground. And using that system, travel system that I built then. Uh, when I had the prototype up, I kind of walked over to the game design director and the creative director and I'm like, hey guys, you want to come see something on my computer? And they were really excited. And, and there'd been a lot of talk as well in the community, both internally and on Reddit and everywhere you see about some bit, you know, structured PvP or, I mean, a lot of alliance tournament talk, of course, which this is not, of course, as, as we've said, and you can read about it all in the dev blog. But at least this is a feature where we wanted to try things like we did with the Needlejacks. Just get it out, see if people like this type of, type of gameplay. If they don't, then do not continue. If, they, if it's amazing, we'll see what happens. Yeah, that seems to be something that you guys talked about, I think, the last time you guys did a Quadrant review was at least we pieced together that um, like CCP Fozzie's group would use events to play with some ideas and if they were popular ideas then it would come to your group and those group those ideas would be cemented into the game in a more permanent way and currently uh to, like this the team i am on was formed uh the events team that i'm on right now is me fossey uh and qa ccb deadlift trash panda our producer uh we have two game design interns at the moment as well and we have another game de game designer, which I always forget the CCP name. What is it? Cerberus. Cer Cerberus. Yes. Cerberus. Producer, yeah. producer on my left side, remember it. <laughs> Isn't that a three three headed dog? Yeah, I think it's the three headed dog. Yeah, that's it was from mythology yeah. that he's picked it. He's been here eleven years, or like with took a break. Yeah, he's back. Been here a long time. Oh, got it. All right. Uh, so, Rise, what can we expect uh, in this uh, feature? What's what's the idea here? I think this is a place where Satonia might add some insight as well. <laughs> you keep trying to go with me on this. I don't have much to do with this at this point. It's, uh, I mean, for the Proving Grounds at least, it's uh, 
pretty straightforward though. I mean, people have been playing it a lot. Uh, it's got a configurable format so we can do a rotating set of events, change the format all the time so it doesn't get stale. It's a quick, uh, you know, dragging people with filaments into a match where they fight, they win some stuff. We're going to have uh, leaderboards probably. Uh, to yeah. Yeah. Of uh, who's I doing think super that, well I think Dan, Dan was going to go into some of that stuff, but uh, we are all, like the leaderboard is coming soon. Uh, it's a bit delayed, uh, so uh-huh. it won't it won't be shown in the UI at least for the first event at this moment. So we are so gathering good. the data in, on on the back end, and uh, we'll see how it goes. We're testing it right now, and might get revealed sooner rather than later. For might, might come for the first event. We'll see. But I think definitely, uh, yeah. a super exciting thing uh, is the is the flexibility of the system. Like it won't only be uh, like it's going to start two v two cruisers, tackling cruisers, but um, there can be FFAs, there can be um, different structures or weather effects put into the proving grounds. Eventually, there can be all kinds of different ship formats or numbers of people. So um, it's a really cool system for kind of looking around for what sort of structured fighting is the most fun um, and, you know, a chance for people that like different types of ships to, like, that's one of the big, I think there's several weaknesses in the old Abyssal Proving Grounds, but um, one of them is definitely that it favors a very particular type of fight and, you know, people optimize for that and then that sticks forever so only people that are interested in that format or successful at it are going to um, get much out of the feature, whereas in this it can it can rotate a lot, and we can um, if it, if it blows up, it's super popular. We can have multiple formats running at a time. I think all that kind of is very exciting for the future of the of the feature. I also want to finish my point with the leaderboard is that we will be giving out to the top hundred. And Dan, do you want to maybe speak a bit about how we are going to be showing at least the top hundred until it is accessible in the game? Yeah, so the idea is the idea was that for every one of the um, abyssal proving ground events that was going to be occurring over this quadrant, and currently there are nine of them on the slate. Um, each one was going to have an in-game leaderboard that would track uh, all your wins, draws, and losses over the course of that event. An event can last anywhere from I think like a week, uh, three days to a week, depending on which one it is, and each one will have a different format. Uh, it's going to take us a little bit longer to get the leaderboards uh, set up in the game as we uh, had originally planned. So the first few events might not have the actual live leaderboard in the game, but just so that we can bring you that information anyway, because regardless of that fact, all of the wins are still being tracked. We're going to set up just a forum thread, which will update regularly. So people who are competing can still see how they're going and uh, or need, can see how much further they need to go in order to get on top. And then I think right now... I. By about the third or fourth event, I think is sort of like the plan to actually have the functional leaderboard in game to hand over to that. So uh, leaderboards will be coming soon properly, TM, um, but you'll still be able to keep track of your progress. In the- Wild, yeah. Sorry, I just noticed I kept calling you by your real name instead of CCP Rise. Uh, uh, that's all right. Kelly just called me Dan right. like eight times. It's, it's cool, man. We're all friends. We're all friends here. It's just us. <laughs> exactly. And- and uh, yeah, this is, uh, it says here that Signal is uh, the one that knows about this one. So sorry about that, Signal. Is there anything else on uh, the Proving Grounds that you wanted to talk about? Uh, the first forma- formats, I guess. So. Hmm. First, you wanna, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, you can go through it then. You have it all. Oh, I have it all. Um, you okay, have it all. So, so as of today, uh, the, to access the Proving Grounds, uh, you need to use a special filament. Uh, as of today, they uh, have become available in the game, dropping in some Triglavian invasion sites and in Abyssal Dead Space. Uh, and on Thursday, they'll also be turning up as a daily login reward. And what you'll be able to do for the first format, it's a 2v2 cruiser format. You'll be able to grab a friend, form a fleet together, and activate one of these filaments. Mechanically, they work in exactly the same way as the Abyssal <laughs> filaments that you're used to. And you'll go into a queue. And you'll get matched up randomly with some other uh, pair of people who are also in a fleet in some other random part of New Eden. You'll be flung into the arena, and then you'll have 15 minutes to duke it out. And this this first one, like I said, is a T2, T2, T2 v2 format using Tech 1 combat, attack, and disruption cruisers only. So you'll have to bring those to the fight. But this will last until the 28th. 
and then there'll be a short break and then a brand new format will come out with an, its own filament which will also become available in the game the second one is a uh, 5v5 sorry it's, it's a, not a 5v5 it's a yeah, five it's a player five free for all yeah in uh, tech one destroyers and then the one on the slate for after that if, to celebrate the Amar foundation day event that'll be happening in game is uh 3v3 teams of just imperial navy slices so the versatility of these filaments really gives us the opportunity to experiment with a lot of different concepts, but also keep changing it up so the meta doesn't get stale, because that was one of the problems that we've had with the Proving Grounds that are currently in Abyssal Dead Space, is that if you go and check out um, uh, the dev blog that uh, the team published the other, the other week, a, a very small number of ships have just sort of like settled into dominating that meta. And you're also then challenged by the fact that in order to get to the PvP element of the proving grounds in the abyssal dead space you have to you have to allow in your fit for the pve segment takes you you know you have to work through in order to get there and that's what's led to this sort of like stagnation so we're taking the proving grounds out of abyssal dead space and putting them so they can stand on their own uh, in an environment where people who want to be able to engage in pvp quickly if you if you, you can spend all day doing these if you want um, or if you've only got like 20 minutes up your sleeve and you just want to get your shoot on, you can just jump into the game and go for it. And I think it's really cool. Sure. Or in between fleets while you wait uh, to do a bombing run. Yeah, you can <laughs> literally just be like PvPing on an alt while you're waiting to PvP. Yeah. Right. Yo, We're dog. wondering about this because, because right now there seems to be a lot of activity in NullSec with a lot of weight being pushed towards wars and a lot of organization and waiting time. So we thought... Well, this feature, which is excellent for people who want to get a few ga gaming minutes in, uh, it seems like it's coming out at the wrong time because you have this huge war going, and you know there's the con. The, there's the idea that Eve is about big wars, right? Because yeah. it can scale better than any other game. Yeah. But this you know, might fit in really nicely. To like just throw a tiger, you know, you know, throw a spinner <laughs> in the works. <laughs> this might this might actually be something that can be in between fleets, you know, when you're waiting around. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's pretty good. So it sounds like. I mean, it kind of sounds like you're working towards a tournament, if I may say so. Because you have like leaderboards, you have uh, different scenarios. I mean, it's starting to all, I'm starting to see like this thing coming together. Uh, but you just need gambling. Oh, you got gambling now too with Hypernet. So, well, we'll see where it goes. Suetonio, so, what do you uh, think about this as a player? I think it's super cool, actually. Just, you know, the chance to have some casual PvP for the people who don't quite have enough people to be able to roam with a filament you know if you're still waiting for like the third or fourth person in your group to get on you can just you know do a 2v2 cruiser or something while you're waiting it, it seems pretty cool like the filaments seem uh seem like something that everyone loves they were like super well received by almost everyone in the game and like i think the format that you guys have got too is really awesome because you can look at the data from each one and then see and I know that there is a little bit of community backlash about instance PvP, but like, obviously with the format that you, you're introducing them, it's very easy for you to like look at PvP metrics in New Eden and see like do these detract from them or are they additional, which I think they'll probably just be like added on value. One of the designs as well for this is that you gotta be out in space. When you queue up, you gotta stay at the trace, which means people can find you and kill you. So instance or not you're also out in space for people that, to mess with you people that might not have contact so yeah that's also an argument there i feel mm -hmm. right um yeah like we certainly hope it will be additive but one thing i forgot to mention before was uh there's some really cool rewards in it for people who have participate as well so first of all not only do you get to pick over the wreckage of your vanquished enemies while you're uh that you happen to blow up while you're in the proving grounds there's also a biodactive cache which will have some cool stuff in there including more filaments so that'll become yet another source i think for you to pick those up from if i've got that correctly yes and right. at the end of of every event you'll also get some uh, exclusive skins and these skins will go straight into the character uh that claims them so then it won't be tradable so if you see someone flying around with these skins you'll know that they earned them um they and the they, didn't just, they didn't they didn't uh wallet you know they didn't win with their wallets and this is the first batch of skins that's going to be available uh this will go signal is it the is it for the top 100 yeah top one top 100 for the 2v2 event the, the we will have the cruiser skins for the omen caracal forest and stabber uh from the, with the, with this new uh, skin line 
Yeah, and different, uh, different. These same skins will be released for different hulls and different events. Assume, I assume they will tie into yeah, the flavor yeah, of the particular for, events. Yeah, for the slicers, we'll have the Omen and Punisher skin, and then the Tristan and Merlin for the Five Man Free Brawl. There's oh, also some the apparel which oh, is going to come up on the screen. Hold on, in a very ugly fashion. And just... There's these awesome suits. Uh, how will these be attainable? These are very rare in the cash for the victim. I oh, say so these will drop they, in the biodective cash that comes out in the uh... yeah. in the brewing grounds. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So and you will be able to sell those on the market, of course. I love these, man. Like I've always wanted, basically Kalakiota outfits because they are the coolest. Uh, skins in the game by a long margin, in my humble opinion. You have something. You you have something else, right, for the whole season. Yep. As... So actually, also tied into the proving ground events, we've got not one but two uh, events that I want to sort of talk about. So the first thing, as soon as I get our gorgeous faces back on the screen. Sorry, folks. You'll have to bear with me. I... Doing the best I can. Um, so the first thing is this Saturday we're going to do a really cool streaming event on Twitch from 1900 to 2100 hours. Uh, a bunch of streamers are going to be teaming up with a bunch of devs and flying 2v2s as a team uh, in the Proving Grounds. So it'll be one streamer plus a dev in their Tech One cruises running Proving Filaments from 1900 to 2100 on Saturday the 18th of July. So you can either tune in and uh, watch your favorite streamer um, and hopefully one of your favorite devs uh, and, uh, and, and watch their uh, exploits and explosions. Or if you want, you can run filaments yourself during that time. And there's probably a not unreasonable chance that uh, Iron Jesus will smile upon you and, and uh, throw you into a battle uh, against a streamer and a dev. And I think we all know uh, devs and streamers oh. Uh, uh, wrecks and kill mails and corpses are very desirable items, probably worth more from a sentimental standpoint to some people than the actual loot that will drop in the sites. So take advantage please, of that. Please don't pot us. We can we can we can go out in the pod, right? Um, yeah, yeah. I, well, yeah, that's right. If you, once your ship gets blown up and you're left in a pod, you can try to slow boat to the fill, the uh, the gate to get out. And it's kind of up to the winners whether or not they want to let their, you know, like if they're feeling generous and they just sort of like wave them through, or if they want to sort of finish them off and send them home early. I'm sure you'll get out then. I'm sure you'll get a lot of the love, right? Thanks, man. Oh, you know, like, oh, yeah, um, no doubt. Like, well, it's going to be hard enough just to stop my ship from exploding by itself. I'll be I'll be streaming from the actual CCP account with Elise Randolph right now. We'll be the, <laughs> the dream team, you, is it, which is ironic because I boundaried and the first time that I actually tried one of these proving filaments. So it's like it's the synergy is we're going to... Um, Part of tradition. Yeah, yeah, we, we're going to work so well together. I can tell already. Um, and the, the other, the list of actual matchups between devs and streamers will be sort of revealed later in the week. But I know Torvald Uras, I think I saw him talking in chat. He's going to be there. He absolutely loved these things. Done some tests recently on Singularity, which he streamed. And uh, we all had what a, a fun. What, what a success story with Torvald. Joins the CSM, immediately gets his stream feature. I know, right? Like, I'm waiting for him to announce his resignation. I need to get CCP <laughs> Dopamine to find out like, who, who the everything first I read, call up I'm is. Done. Yep. He's like, okay, so what's happened? What's coming up? And like, CCP signals like, oh, hey, we've got these proving filaments. And and Torv was like, job's done. See you guys later. <laughs> like going crazy. Most efficient meeting. CSM of all time. Well, it's funny. I'm still stuck on you saying RN Jesus. Is that what you call me? <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, I, Random number generator. He's uh, um, he's he's not quite. He's not as fickle as the loot fairy. So I put my faith in him. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the other right. the other thing I quickly want to talk about, and as if I can talk about anything quickly, um, is the Champions of the Abyss event, which we're going to be running over the quadrant as well. So this is a little bit less formal. This is uh, ne isn't necessarily enshrined in the game mechanics like the leaderboard for the events. This is something that community is 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 doing as an add on. And the, what's going to happen with this is over the course of the entire quadrant. We will add up the leaderboards from every single event to find out which characters have the most wins overall. Um, and the top 10 will be getting some cool rewards. They'll be getting, they'll get, be getting uh, some plex. Um, they'll be getting some shout outs on things like the scope. Uh, the top three will be able to choose a, a model of their choice from our excellent ship models from mixed dimensions. And the devs will sign the base of, the, of that ship model and send it back to them so they have like a unique souvenir. Um, there'll be medals that will be awarded to the character sheets and a whole bunch of stuff. 
there'll be some actual uh, a thorough dev blog laying everything out about that um, coming out I think by Thursday at the latest because that's when the proving filaments become active and you can start using them at downtime on Thursday uh, so it would be nice if you knew what was going to be uh, what the actual the, the rules the T's and C's were surrounding this so we'll get that to you soon same with a news item around the streaming event that's going to happen on the weekend with That'll be coming out in the next couple of days, so keep an eye out. But lots of really cool stuff coming up in the quadrant to do with these proving grounds. I think they're going to be awesome. Wow, that was a, that's a ton of stuff coming out for this. Um, but to be clear, the proving grounds are out today, isn't that right? The As code is out. It will be active on Thursday. I see. Okay. We, we're giving uh, we're giving folks a few days just to accumulate some of the filaments. So. So that when the feature is actually switched on at downtime on Thursday, they can hit the ground running. They don't need to uh, scratch also, around finding some filaments the, first. There will also be the logging. Sorry. Yeah, and beginning like Thursday. Where we give out, give yeah. out filaments. And there will be daily challenge of after the, during the proving ground. So, so just to be clear, how do people get involved with this from now until Thursday? Well, as of now, you can get the filaments in drops in invasion uh, sites and in Abyssal Dead Space itself. That's where you can collect the filaments. I've already seen them on the market in Jita, so you can get them there as well. Um, and so you just camp on those for a couple of days. Thursday downtime, the filaments will activate and you'll immediately be able to grab a friend, form a fleet, and start flinging yourself into the Proving Grounds for fights. Also on Thursday, they'll become available through an additional means in the form of daily login rewards when you uh, fire up EVE and you go to start the game. Nice. Okay. Well, thanks for that. That is a ton. And um, we're going to, are we finished with that? Do we want to do anything more on the, okay. Let's so, let the other guys talk a bit. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, try, to, try to distribute time here. Um, I want to move over to ESS rework if we can uh, with CCP psych. Uh, that is something that's eagerly anticipated. I'm wondering if you can give us more information on that. Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I can. Uh, I have some bullet points here. Uh, they won't give they won't give you the entire thing, but um, I want to start with the on grid rules we have at the moment established. So as we said last time, the SS is going to be a permanent thing, and it will exist in every NALSEC system. You won't have to buy it. You won't have to anchor it. It will just be there, and it will take effect from day one after uh, release. So it cannot be destroyed. It's a permanent thing. And the uh, percentile of uh, the bounties that you acquire goes to, to the ESS. Now, uh, we're putting it behind an accelerator gate, which means only medium and large ships uh, will be able to uh, access it for now. Uh, we had some discussions with the CSM, and we are considering adding small ships to, uh, to get in the pocket, but we we'll probably won't allow them to use the ESS. This is something that will probably come on a point release. Uh, it's not going to be on day one. First, we want to see how uh, medium and large ships uh, is going to play out. And uh, within the pocket, there are the following rules for 75 kilometer bubble, which uh, disclaimer all numbers are subject to change, of course. So uh, no warping, no MJD, no micro warp drives and no filament activations of course there will be no clocking and no sinus and i hope i'm not forgetting anything but uh, these are these are the rules that uh, will exist from day one what do you think Satonia? oh it sounds super super duper cool actually like i've been really excited for the ess rework because uh Something that small gangs have wanted for such a long time is some way to get people to be able to fight you because most people just, you know, just dock up and wait until you leave. And obviously things like timers and stuff don't really work when you fill them in or you come in from a wormhole because you can't show up to the second timer. So you don't really have much way of forcing them to fight. So this sounds uh, super interesting. Uh, dead space in every single no sex system in the game as well is going to be like great for being able to. Uh, uh, get fights and be able to fight people without being sino dropped as well. So that's also like super exciting. Yeah, for people that don't understand what ESS is, um, is there a basic way to explain it so that it's very simple for new players to understand? 
Uh, uh, yeah, it's like a it's like a risk versus reward structure. You put it down right now. It's a deployable. You put it down in your space, and it takes twenty percent of all the bounties that are earned while it's active inside it, as well as while it's active as well. It also gives you some loyalty points for the faction that the ESS is based on, and that actually grows over time. So that there's an incentive for you to not just share it or take from it every five minutes or whatever. Every time it gets shared or taken from, it resets the bonus. So the idea is that you put this up, you potentially uh, get way more ISK if you're willing to uh, be able to protect that ESS. But not a lot of people use it right now because uh, they, they don't find the risk acceptable or there's a lot of like ratting drama with it right now because if you have three people who are ratting in the system, one of them wants to go to bed, he wants to share his his rewards, but then you know the other two people don't want him to do that because then they're going to reset the bonus. So it's like a yeah. it's like a tip jar, and somebody's checking out early, and the three waiters are like, "Well, what do we do with the tips?" Uh, that's what it sounds like. Uh, Psych, do you have? Uh, why did you Why did you touch this thing? Why did it need to be improved? Well, as you Tony said, it wasn't really used much in the game, and it felt uh, that leaving the choice to the players was uh, hurting the system. And uh, I mean, that's the baseline of uh, why the change happened. But uh, in the end, it's, uh, it, it was a rework. It is a rework. Uh, like we're taking something uh, from the past and uh, we're putting some new goals. Now, all the rules that I said about what's happening on grid is just the, the surface of what the new ESS is about. There's some other stuff, and we will be probably releasing some mini blogs to give in people information of how the entire thing will work, uh, because it's a very big uh, change from what it used to be. Like, uh, for example, uh, one important thing to mention is that you won't be able to uh, access the ESS and uh, give back ISK to the players that uh, contributed, to the players that were um, ratting, for example. Uh, that uh, will be done automatically. Uh, right now we say every few hours, but as I said, all, all numbers are subject to change. Uh, so there, 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 there's a lot of balancing between defenders and attackers. And we had uh, a lot of thinking and a lot of back and forward, especially with the CSM, to figure out what's the best compromise between uh, having something that uh, defenders won't feel that it's being, um, it's taking their, uh, their hard-earned money away, but also having something that is uh, an interesting uh, goal for, for a roaming party. Uh, there are some other stuff involved. For example, uh, the percentile that goes to the ESS is, uh, will depend and uh, that's tied to another system that we're creating that probably you haven't heard before and it's uh, a dynamic bounty system that will be active in all Malsec. more details to come again in a mini block but uh, to give you an idea of what this means it means that uh, the amount of bounties that you will be getting depends on uh, let's say the the risk of the system like the activity on the system. That means if you are uh, rotting uncontrolled, uncontrolled uh, you will see your bounties go down day by day. Oh. If uh, there is a huge battle happening and if there is a lot of, uh, like, uh, uh, let's call it destruction, uh, then you'll probably see your uh, bounties going up. And uh, to mitigate the percent of that is lost for the ESS, Again, numbers are subject to change. At least for release, we are uh, considering a 15% increase in all bounties for NALSEC. Uh, I'll give you probably more details later this month, I guess, about how the split is done. But uh, yeah, that's... Well, that sounds cool. So that's yeah. like uh, you get a little more danger pay if you're working in a system that has more PVP or something more dangerous. But if it's a quiet system, without interruption it pays less correct yeah that's the tldr yeah and that seems interesting that seems like a dynamic system which is something that you were bringing to the ecology of eve online at least that's what was presented as the third section of it was to make things rare uh to diversify where they are and then ultimately to make systems more dynamic like this 
Uh, first, uh, we talked about it uh, in the mineral distribution uh, changes. Uh, the third uh, state, uh, the third phase will be the, to, to get to dynamic uh, mineral distribution, uh, but that's that's it. That, that, that has its own road at the moment. But uh, at the end of the road, you will see both those systems and maybe uh, some other stuff that we have installed uh, combined. So all the different dynamic systems will probably uh, interact with each other. That's that's the end goal. Uh, we feel that the dynamic, dynamic boundaries is probably the first test, uh, if you will. And slowly, slowly, hopefully, we'll get uh, we'll get there. Oh, cool. I've also noticed that you're taking features that aren't getting a whole lot of use or as much use as you wanted to. Like I'm thinking of the proving grounds as the other example, and then the ESS in this example, and you're polishing them off, rethinking them and retooling them for better usage. See if that works. Will we see more of that in the development of uh, the features that are out there? I mean, definitely. Uh, we work in iterations and uh, we, we are really data driven at the moment. We try to understand what works, what doesn't work, but uh, we also try to get new things out there. Uh, like as Signal said, uh, their their purpose is to just do stuff. Let's figure out what's the next exciting exciting uh, thing uh, that will happen. And uh, it's it's not about uh, failing. It's fine if, if we fail. You know, failing is part of of, of the job. We'll take the lesson, we make it better. If it doesn't work, we'll just move on. Yeah, tell me about it. This is our this is our third backup plan to get this stream out. So failure is part of the process. Um, OK, thanks very much. I want to move now to something that is also eagerly awaited and surprised a lot of people when it was first alluded to, and that is some changes to command ships, which haven't been touched, I think, in a while. Uh, CCP Rise, I think you're involved with that. Is that right? That's right. What's going uh, on? Yeah, uh, we're going to do a pass on command ships. We're excited. Talos is going to get back into um, trying to hit two weeks ish. It's summer, so we'll see how it goes, but get back to kind of the fast balance pace that we had. And command ships are just where we're starting. Um, there's lots of stuff to work on. We want to um, do some updates to a few different trig ships. We want to. Um, we had plans to work on dictors, a few other things. But um, yes, for command ships, we have a pretty uh, pretty deep pass. No like massive uh, you know, new abilities or anything like that, but but trying to fix up some of the super underused ones, um, especially like Nighthawk and EOS. But um, everything except the Slipner and the Damnation is basically getting some kind of change to try and pull it into a... Uh, a uh, higher amount of use. Um, we're going to try and split the two sets of command ships a little more deliberately. So the attack group, which is like Nighthawk, Absolution, Astarte, and Slipner, are going to go from 3% uh, bonus per level to the command burst strength to 4% per level, but they're going to lose the range bonus. And then they're all going to go, except for the Slipner, they're all going to, like Astarte, Absolution, and Nighthawk are all going to speed up a little bit. Um, and so hopefully they're a little bit easier to use in faster, smaller fleets and, and offer a stronger bonus if you can make them work for that. And then the fleet variations are generally going to move towards being even more survivable and more long range focused so that they actually have a chance at, um, staying on field if they're not a damnation. So the vulture is going to get a shield HP bonus to match the damnation HP bonus. The, um... The EOS and Claymore are going to get a resist bonus instead of their active bonuses, which is a bit um, unusual. You know, usually we keep Galente and Minotaur to um, rep and shield boost rather than armor and shield resist. But for a, a role that's meant to be um, a high priority fleet support role, it's just not viable without that. So we're going to give that bonus to them instead. Um, and then the EOS is making a switch to being more of a sentry platform rather than the sort of mixed um, heavy drone platform that it is right now. Um, and that's all coming super soon. It's, we're going to put it in between the two main releases. Uh, so in like a week and a half, two weeks, this, uh, this pass will hit and we'll have details. I, the ships will probably be on Singularity 
early next week, something like that. So you'll have all the details before long. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I only ever saw the AOS in like uh, tournaments and stuff. I never see them in the wild. So it'll be neat to see them. Yeah, a long time ago, they they were around like way, way, way back. But it's been a while since since they were. And actually, for, for a lot of those... I mean, command ships are in a weird spot because they're they're competing. In a lot of cases, you'd rather have a Tech 3 cruiser because you need the speed. You need to be able to keep up with um, smaller cruiser fleets. Um, they're also very expensive. So even though their combat stats are pretty strong, it's hard to justify flying them versus um, other options that are cheaper. So we'll see how it goes after this pass. Hopefully it can freshen them up a bit. And yeah, the to me, the, the most exciting thing is, is just getting getting back to, to keeping the balance moving as fast as possible. There's always work to do. Um, like I said, trig stuff hasn't gotten tweaks in a while. We need to come back and revisit the Edencom stuff. Um, kind of funny trying to figure out what's going on there. The um, ships probably need some adjustment, but also we set the skill requirement really high on them, so it's taking quite a bit of time for people to skill up, and then you need a fleet with all those skills to be able to um, reasonably use them since they're so fleet oriented, but want to make sure that they're good enough to justify all that training. So maybe a pass there and yeah, just keep picking stuff up and yeah. it'll be an interesting quadrant for us because we're trying to, uh, uh, thread these balance updates in between, uh, continuing, um, a bigger stuff. We have more work for structures, more work for caps and super caps. Um, lots, lots on the way, uh, kind of at a slightly bigger scale than the, the rapid balance stuff. And it's going to be challenging to do all this under the umbrella of a war in UE. Obviously, certain changes, um, which were on the yeah. drawing board, uh, could have an influence one way or the other on, on based on doctrinal choices of, of certain sides and things like that. So I don't know yeah, with, if, if everything is going to be We're not stressing schedule. about it too much, but it's a, it is a super interesting topic. We have some structure changes coming, which are would be very uh, <laughs> problematic potentially to ship mid-war. So um, we're keeping kind of in touch with um, both sides of the war to try to make sure that we don't put anything in that's going to heavily favor one side or heavily reward one side during the middle, and, and especially not do something that would disrupt conflict. Obviously, war is uh, the thing we all want more than anything else. So if... Uh, if we give, ex give excuses to end the war. Yeah, that would be unfortunate. So we are trying to be careful about that. We also, of course, want to keep making changes and keep doing good things. So um, we can't put development on hold until you guys stop fighting. Who knows how long that would take. Um, but we're yeah trying not to mess anything up at the same time. We'll yeah. still give you good stuff. Don't stop fighting. Okay. The CSM has weighed in on this as well. Haven't they uh, written up something together? Uh... Yeah, we, we panicked them really bad. We... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> showed them just a piece of a design that was enough to make them think that uh, we were going to basically put in a, a really powerful new tool that was going to help one side more than the other, but didn't give them a lot of details. And they immediately started fighting with each other about who was metagaming the, C the who was metagaming CCP, convincing us to make stuff to favor their side. And um, <laughs> so we quickly went to them and were like, hey, you know, we're not in a rush and we're going to make sure you see everything and we're going to talk to both sides. and. Um, when we get out of game, it's not that obvious. So, yeah, yeah. Well. Um, the the other side of the coin is should should development stop in lieu of these wars? Is that fair to other parts of the game? Right, and that's that's the thing. I, I, you know, and I think what where we're arriving for now, at least, is that we just need to take it very feature by feature. We're continuing to make everything we were planning to make, and then we're just uh, developing when to release it. Yeah, we're just putting it in in separate code sandboxes where we can move it in when we all agree it's a good time. And uh, for the most part, I think we will just keep shipping stuff. Most things shouldn't favor one side too heavily or cause too many problems, but but we'll at least take the time to check. You know, that Stop each... all development work on the MP. Stop it now. <laughs> and some changes will you know act, could actually enhance the situation with the like when the command ship yeah. changes come out. That's something anyone can use. And it's just, you're basically throwing a Rubik's Cube to all of the FCs and all the theory crafters on both sides. And they're like, this could be, there could be an awesome new tool here, which is going to, you know, um, lead you down the path of a new doctrine or, or fill some hole in your, in your uh, fleet compositions that you've been missing. And the first one to figure this out 
um, is is going to is going to be able to uh, get the jump on their opponents at least in the short term until things sort of um, sort of balance out again and the other guys catch up. So that aspect, those kinds of changes can can actually be rewarding uh, during a war. Yeah, and, and, and even war. going further, you know, that direction, there are I think some changes that are specifically like we can specifically prioritize to try and make um, wartime um, kind of smoother or feel better, like the uh, cloaked corp kick thing that went out today. Um, we're also talking about um, rules around e-warping for caps and big fights. Um, there's some there's some room with stuff like this to try and specifically stamp out uh, weird edge cases or issues that cause more trouble during wartime than they would normally. So yeah, yeah full spectrum of stuff, and we just take it feature by feature, I think. Also, while, I've, way, while I've got you guys here, we really need to take a look at the um, the mineral requirements for cormorants, because have you seen how expensive those things have gotten lately? <laughs> <laughs> All right, because a lot I of them are being I is really into reducing mineral requirements, so you might be careful what you wish for. By the way, there's a little bug that you guys fixed about kicking people out that are cloaked up in space, right? What was that? Yeah, I, that was just, uh, you know, one of these... Uh, they're uh quirks in the system you could, you could hold a person you know you could you could stay as long as you were cloaked and you didn't dock you couldn't be kicked and that was helping with a waxing and and other sort of harassment issues and so we put in uh um f fix to allow you to kick people who are just normal cloaked in space so they don't have to dock or you don't have to wait till downtime so hopefully that helps um deal with deal with that when it comes up um that was something that came through the csm as a as an issue that was coming up pretty regularly so Wow, it's probably been there a long time. I was trying to deal with them. Yeah, it's probably been there a long time. So, Tony, what do you think of the command ship changes? I'm pretty excited about them, especially uh, the the attack line getting reworked. So, I'll be able to see a few more of them in uh, small and medium gangs. Yeah. So, yeah. Like the EOS and the 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 EOS the absolution, you can't really use them too well right now, and the Nighthawk as well. So. Be interesting seeing those get a uh, new lick of paint. Yeah, that the the, the uh, Nighthawk is like was total garbage. It should be pretty good now. The Absolution is fine. We're speeding it up a bit. There's definitely, I think, a reasonable case that there's going to be some with 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 a lot of these uh, underused ships and classes. Speed is so often the issue, and I think pretty soon, like there's some speed creep here, as there often is when we go look at an underused class. We tend to have a hard time avoiding some speed creep. And I think pretty soon we're going to need to kind of circle around and look at speed in general. Maybe, uh, you know, give speed the same treatment that resists got recently, where we <laughs> more holistic uh, look at it. But um, for now, a little extra speed, especially for like Absolution and Astarte and Nighthawk, should help um, help make them uh, more legitimate options versus faction BCs or Tech 3 Cruisers or something like that. So that is pretty exciting. A little bit of a rabbit hole here, Rise, but I think it'd be interesting, interesting to explore with you, and that is the, the advantage of speed and how it has changed over the years. Uh, can you tell us a little I bit think, more about that? Well, I mean, kind of what's funny is the, the, the advantage of speed hasn't changed um, necessarily, but I think over time it's just become clearer and clearer that it's the most effective. Um, it's like the mo basically the most important stat in the game because it does both mitigation so it's it's basically you know you can tank uh often more effectively with speed than you can with specific tank modules like plates or reps or something like that and you get positional control which is enormously important for controlling uh how damage flows around a battlefield so um between those two things it just ends up being more and more of an emphasis and um you know back way back you you had some really extreme um i don't know like, you know, you had nano typhoons in that period where you saw like a completely degenerate version of what happens when speed is um, too easy to get. But um, since that was removed, I think over time, you've just seen more and more play styles and situations gravitate towards um, people favoring speed over anything else because it just offers so many advantages. And uh, I think that's why we've ended up lately talking more about, you know, in the, the, the little set of changes we did to ammo. Um, realized we just you need that there isn't a balanced incentive to go slow. Uh, going slow is just so costly. It means that you take 
more damage than everyone else, and you don't get to pick where you are, so you have trouble with damage projection, you have trouble with tackle, that kind of thing. So um, just need to both build up advantages for um, the trade-off of going slow, and then maybe also just tone down access to speed in some cases to, to pull fights in a little closer and um, keep damage mitigation from being out of control. I think that's part of what we're running into with the Eden Comb ships, by the way, is that since they have speed as part of their... Uh, damage mitigation formula like everything else um, but you don't easily get to tackle the chain targets um, it's it's really hard to expect to apply that much damage um, because you might be able to web the first thing you shoot but the next four things you hit might be moving really fast and that means you kind of don't have much control over how much damage you do and it's a introduce web bubbles fixed right yeah <laughs> um but yeah, I don't know. It's something we need to yeah. we need to look at. It's also really fun. I think it's also a tricky thing to, for us to go and, you know, I don't think we want like say, oh, everything goes half as fast as it used to because uh, it's super fun going fast. Everybody wants to fly fast ships, and um, I don't think we, you know, want to kind of trample on the good feeling of of going fast and controlling range. A lot of our best um, gameplay and mastery around combat has to do with positioning and speed. So. Um, it's a delicate thing, but um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's also exhilarating to escape something and exhilarating to be able to yeah. pull it into range. Exactly. Uh, so uh, and there were some funny things with speed, I think, in EVE Online. You had Nano being super popular as a tank a long time ago. Um, there's stuff with tracking a target. I used to think that if you you know slowed your battleship down to zero, you were able to hit targets better. Is that true, mm. by the way, or is somebody lighter? It's kind of true. <laughs> well, it's, like people call it control spacing sometimes, but I mean, it's mostly just because people are like, if you're not moving, then you're not killing your own speed. Like the best thing to do really is for you to like manually position your ship so that they have like the least amount of traversal. So fly parallel with them. Yeah. If you can. Except the battleship can't keep up with a frigate. So I thought, well, whatever. I'll go back to mining. So, Tony, what do you think of... Um, do you have anything that you want to add to the speed thing before we move on? I don't know. I, th I think everything Ryan said was uh, super reasonable. So, I mean, there yeah. have been, like, you know, advantages in speed over time, like, you know, abyssals and, like, when micro warp drives were uh, tier sided I think they were increased a bit, too. And now, with the more powerful links on, like, the Slepnir, there's going to be, like, slightly more power in the speed link so you know it kind of makes sense for them to take a look at it and maybe make a few reductions here and there something um i'm excited about trying to do which we'll see how it goes it's not very far along yet but is rather than saying um everything has to slow down or or just kind of nerfing speed across the board just um instead trying to look for trade-offs you know saying um potentially uh, propulsion modules have charges that maybe offer the same amount of speed as a maximum, but increase your cap cost or increase your SIG or some other penalty. Because we do have, um, you know, micro warp drives have penalties associated with going faster, but we could make that a lot deeper if we wanted. We could have more variations in the micro warp drive lineup or afterburner lineup or um, through through charges or some other method to make it so that you could say, I, I want to go super, super fast, but I'm going to give up something for it. I'm going to hurt my gun range or I'm going to... Um, make my SIG really big or I'm going to drain my cap really fast. Um, right now, it's, it's, it's pretty flat in a way, the way that the propulsion modules are balanced. Yeah. One last thing, if I could. You put in new ships. Uh, they shoot elect electrical blasts. Uh, pretty amazing. How are those like fitting into the... Have they found their spot yet or are you still tweaking them? It's hard to tell. I mean, no is the simple answer. They haven't found their spot and they need tweaks. Um, but the thing we're trying to figure out is how much of that is because of the pretty steep skill requirement we put on them. Um, looking back, I think uh, asking for this much skill investment for a ship with um, uh, kind of a, a lot of other strains on its use, like mostly needing to be in groups, the fact that it's not really a, a small scale. It's not something I can, like with trig ships, it was totally viable at launch for someone to say, I'm going to fly uh, uh, Leshak. I can do that by myself or I can join a group and it doesn't have any kind of natural friction with what the group's doing. But uh, Eden Comm ships are really, really fleet based. It's, it's a lot harder to just decide yourself, which means that skill requirement is put on the whole group uh, oh, to be... Wow you know, thinking it's worth investing in. 
Um, and uh, I, it's hard. So because of that, it's hard to tell, you know, where they'll land. Also needs to take time for like FCs to be willing to, to give it a shot. Um, I know from, from talking to FCs around that there's definitely interest. I mean, you saw when we announced them, even before they got some final buffs, there was a mix of people thinking they were going to be OP and useless. And I think there's still uh, kind of some question about how good they will be once they're implemented in, in larger fleets. But um, it also seems like they probably is room for, for some tweaks. I think the, the, the issue I mentioned with um, speed mitigation on, on the secondary targets is pretty big. And we're talking about um, removing the speed element from the damage formula so that they're more like bombs where the damage is only mitigated by SIG. And that way you don't get punished for shooting into a group where you don't have webs on everything. But we'll see. Needs a little more time. We're still kind of watching and, and seeing how things go. Well, it's understandable that took a bunch of time to work out. And you're trying to get back on cadence, starting with command ships. Uh, it's starting to change ships quicker and quicker. That's right. Keep changes Thanks. coming. That's right. Uh, all right. Uh, Convict, can you tell us about uh, some of these really cool things that are coming out, especially the Malaya Cemetery? Yeah, so just recently on the subject of monuments in general, uh, we've uh, we've recently added a new landmark to the game, which some of you guys might have noticed in the system of Tunnadon. Uh, it's called Birthday Bash, and it uh, it contains the wrecks of all the capital ships that were destroyed during uh, World War Chappie uh, at the Sun. There, if you want to go and check it out, um, it's a it's a really cool site. We went back there for another brawl uh, just the other night uh, for sort of like I guess like. Chappie's farewell because last I heard he said he was going to retire that character um, and sort of concentrate mm -hmm. on um, on his treatment and his health right uh, yeah. but it was so good to be able to go back to that side and have a fight there um, with the the landmark the monument from the previous fight already in the game and like it was actually it was actually our, our game design interns Himara who sort of like pounced on that yeah shout out to those guys yeah you engineered guys it so quickly they did a great job so hopefully you guys will get to sort of like meet meet figuratively speaking those guys at some point in the upcoming stream they're really really cool guys uh and they've also been making the uh parades yeah actually you're, yeah you're right all of the all of the like the empire day parades that we've seen so far the federation day and currently the uh, liberation day and the upcoming mr ones they're the guys who are who are building all of those um all those sites with all the all the ships lined up for you to go and, and shoot fireworks at your points from they're doing a great job um oh and well, sorry go well i was just going to look at something a little bit uh, deeper and that is there's an interesting aspect to this whole thing uh with Chappie, who was able to tell everybody that he's going to disappear from the game. Uh, and everybody had this overwhelming urge to celebrate him and through this giant fight for him. And here in parallel, there is like a memorial to that event that he gets to see with all the friends that came the first time. Uh, so it, it's, it's an interesting cycle of being able to understand how much people appreciate you. And I hope it reflects to people who never get the chance to see how much they're appreciated by other, other players as well. Yeah. And in some ways, I, I, I mean, there's obviously a lot of people who play this game who are going through some kind of hardship, whether it be health related or, you know, uh, family related or something to do with their career every single day. And it, it would be great if we could make a monument for everyone who um, is having a hard time. Just we obviously we can't, can't do that. We don't have the resources. And for Chappie to have emerged and just become like this focal point for all the community's goodwill and, and supporting other capsuleers, it's fantastic. Because now we've got to, as a consequence of this, make this monument, which is really meaningful, which can also be a symbol for all the other players who are enduring some kind of like real life hardship. And it can become a site that people can visit, a site that people can hold events at for, um, you know, for, for other birthdays or if, if corporations are passing their head around to sort of um, try and raise some money or, or just get, gather up some plex to try and keep their friends playing so that they don't have to pay and can put their money on more pressing matters. Um, this, this site can be somewhere that the community can gather again and again and again for those sorts of occasions. And it's really good that we have something in the game now which can and serve as sort of the nexus for that kind of sentiment and that goodwill. So I'm really happy it's um, Interestingly, uh, uh, following on from that though, when that monument went into the game, uh, I, I noticed there was a comment on, on one of the Reddit threads about it, I think, and someone was like, hey, where's that, uh, where's that Fort Knox monument that you guys promised us? And I was like, what are you talking about? And they showed me a, 
a, a comment from the CCP account on a YouTube video from two years ago where someone had said, uh, hey, this thing should really have like, it was the first Keepstar anchored in the game and it got blown up. It should, uh, should have something to sort of commemorate it. And the CCP account, whoever was driving it at the time, replied and said, hey, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll get on that. <laughs> and this was two years ago. Um, Delivery of your promise. Yeah, right. And that got me thinking. I was like, well, those intern guys did such a good job with, uh, with the, uh, happy, the birthday bash monument. So I went and spoke to them again. And at some time in the not too distant future, TM, uh, there probably will be a Keepstar wreck in, uh, in the old, uh, at the old Fort Knox site. So um, yeah. keep an eye out for that one. And just one more thing to visit, because um, I don't think there are many player-made landmarks in Wormholes. I mean, there's lots of cool stuff like Shattered Planets and uh, Drifter sites and things like that, but I don't know how many player-made ones. So it'll be good to sort of like close the book on that, you know, see all the deal. Um, but finally on monuments, there's one more I wanted to talk about. And this is something that we've been sort of talking about again frequently since last September at G Fleet in, uh, in, in Berlin. And that is, of course, what we're doing with the Malaya Cemetery. It's sort of been put forward uh, and um, has kind of sort of, we, we bring it up now and then. But uh, the great news is uh, we finally have a date for this thing to go into the game. And I'll just run the video of it so you guys can check it out again. So as you know, in Malaya, there is a, uh, there's a POS. There's a POS stick anchored in space, covered, surrounded by a shell of uh, uh, cans, which players have come and anchored and named after their, um, their, you know, the lost wingman, the people who have passed away in real life so that their corpse and alliances and anyone who passes by can remember them. And often they put some, um, some keepsakes inside there, some things that reminded them, maybe a few bottles of liquor or uh, something like that. Um, uh, but posses are coming out of the game. And this site is far, far too important to just let it go. So uh, the art team got together and made this amazing looking monument, which is sort of inspired by the basalt columns that you see here a lot around the, the volcanic rock here in Iceland with uh, the eternal Sino in the middle and a, a, a pod with the capsuleers emerging from it and, and sort of gliding up towards the heavens. Um, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful monument. Um, and we've kind of been teasing it for a while now. Actually, teasing is not the right word because we haven't been going like, hee, 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 because uh, this is a little bit too serious for that. But um, we've shown it several times. But now it's coming to the game and it's going to be in the game from the 21st of July. And so, which is, uh, which oh, is only really about, soon. yeah, it was only a week from now. And great, great care is going to be taken with the cans that are already at the site. They will still remain there. The boss will go, be go, the monument will be added, but all the cans that were still there uh, will still be safe. Uh, and um, and what won't expire, which is why they're anchored around them. Some extra information as well on show info on the, on the monument to like, guide people on what to do to anchor the can, what, what can is the safest to anchor. All right, like how to leave their remembrance so they don't do a jet can or something and then and it's gone away as to ephemeral. That's cool. Yeah, nice. that's fantastic. So that's a player-made memorial to players that have passed on. It's created by players a long time ago. And to give it permanence, you built that beautiful sculpture with a light that shoots into the sky uh, periodically. So you can, you can visit it, uh, remember a friend, and then wait for that. I think it happens every 20 minutes or something. And if um, you ever come to Iceland as well, like uh, the model for the monument is modeled after the Stuttlaber, volcanic rock kind of thing, which you can find in Iceland. Very beautiful. So, and, um, and I think that light that goes, by the way, pulses into space is supposed to represent like, you know, passing on to the next uh, thing. So it's all very symbolic, very interesting, and also very beautiful if you look at the ground. Yeah. We also have that in Iceland. It's called Freyar Sulan or Peace, a peace Monument or something like that. I can't remember the oh. English word for it. It's built by Yoko Ono, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. I thought you were talking about like the northern uh, lights yeah. or... Yeah, it's a it's actually a thing that was fun, funded by Yoko Ono in Iceland. Wow, like, I didn't know that. Peace. Uh, it's called Fredasula in Icelandic. What is it in English? It's just a light that goes straight up into the sky. They turn it off once in a while in Iceland. Very beautiful. Yoko yeah, it's really beautiful. I remember seeing it for the first time. I had no idea. I just saw like this huge light yeah. beam going up into space. Yeah. It's actually very close to my neighborhood, which I grew up in. That's where it's located. Well, there's some parallels there between uh, the memorial. Uh, Peace pillar, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks very much for that. Is there um, 
convicts or anything else that we didn't cover that you, I mean, this was a ton of information or excited about all the stuff that we saw everything from the ESS changes to command ship uh, changes, of course, to the proving grounds and also uh, trying to decipher that trailer. Is there anything else uh, that we missed? And I hope I didn't speak on the art department, but that's how, at least my interpretation, let's just say that. Because <laughs> those two things <laughs> remind me of those things and I just, before I get slapped on the hands after the stream. <laughs> yeah, I would run. Right, you probably know it. <clears throat> All right. I, well, well, I don't know. We, there, was, there, was, there was one other thing that we floated before the show. I don't know if, if uh, TCP signal was going to... Am I giving up more? Well, I mean, like... Um, I'm yes, actually, you are. We've actually, we've yeah, actually, sort, of, for. actually sort of dished a lot I mean, more than I actually expected, just, like uh, particularly CCP Rise. I, th I, thought, I thought that the command, the command ship thing was going to be like, yeah, command ships aren't in a great place, so we want to fix them coming soon. Now we've hyped end. this up so much, but I mean, it was just something that the team said, like, has been looking into, uh, building on top of the system on effects stuff that we, we got into the game recently, like updating the UI for uh, wormholes and stuff that we were thinking it would be pretty cool maybe uh, to have some uh, roaming weathers, basically, where you could dict in NullSec moving the system weather effects kind of outwards from a system where you would have Eve weatherman dictating weather. Where where will these effects be landing? Oh, I love that. Been looking at that. Yeah. So that would or, be natural. In That would be part of the environment. That wouldn't be anything people could control, right? Well, that's right. Human behavior does not affect climate or weather. <laughs> it's like it's it's the police, never yeah. control the weather in Iceland. Well, I mean, if they like mine too much and pollute too much, maybe it rains more in that area. But to start with, yeah, I'll say behavior is not part of it. Hmm. Okay, to but, start with, okay. But yeah, you have um, you have certain weather effects in in places like wormholes now and in, in Triglavian space. Um, and so accompanying these things would be some probably some very exciting and pretty new environments and it would be sort of migrate predictably um, through certain areas of space and may mean that a particular you know what a particular ship that you were doing a certain kind of activity in a certain region maybe there would be a better ship to do. something like that but it'll, mm -hmm. it'll add a certain dynamism to to activity in NOSEC space but it's just Again, another sort of like um, something that we're still rinsing around. We've talked about a lot of stuff here tonight. Some and and some stuff is up close and in really really sharp focus, and some other things are a little bit further away and a little bit blurry. And then you've got these other sort of mitigating circumstances that sort of intersect with those, like things like the war, those kinds of things, which can sort of like change the timing on it. So things like the proving grounds, for example, hey, that's two days away. You know, we can talk about that all night, and you'll be able to. Uh, uh, jump straight into that a little bit further down the field uh, like you know command ships and then a little bit further again the ESS so um, uh, I know f from being a player for such a long time uh, CCP uh, would often uh, mention something that re sounded really really fantastic at like you know a, a fan fest or an Eve Vegas and then like um, Angel Capital Ship does anyone remember those um, but the most of the stuff we're talking about right now is in is in much um, a much sharper relief Clear effects, although still yeah. still we're not talking about stuff which is like maybe in like a year or more sort of time span this is all stuff which ideally would be you know uh, th this is a quadrant three stream so we're talking about stuff that we've yeah. thought about for this quadrant right so proving grounds uh coming on thursday and i think you said the 21st was it will be the memorial that gets put in and uh, most of the other stuff is being worked on for this quarter that's coming up yep and uh, the I forget the streaming uh, the streaming with uh, event on Saturday night, and of course the Champions of the Abyss, which will be running all over the quad. And they didn't allow me to speak about everything, so there's more. No, more there's a, there's a lot of things unrevealed <laughs> that we'll learn about later. So it's going to be an interesting summer and quadrant. Wasn't there something about localization or something? <laughs> <laughs> Oracle is the Oracle is the miner. The uh, Minder, I should say. She's making sure everything gets uh, said that needs to be said and nothing more. So we'll we'll stop there and make her job less hard. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Convict, for coming over and uh, or actually for me coming over to your house because my house was on fire. Uh, so I appreciate that you were able to put the stream up. No worries, man. And like, like no hard feelings either. I mean, like, 
you know, God knows we've we've had some uh, technical gremlins ourselves while trying to do these things. Uh, exactly, was, we're under construction still, so we you. don't even have. <laughs> I don't know. It looks pretty nice there. It looks like uh, looks like you guys are pretty comfortable already. Well, that's awesome. And Suetonia, thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. Always like your insight. Uh, such a smart player. And Felipe, I didn't introduce you at the beginning, but I'll introduce you now if you want. It's, uh, I didn't know you were in here, but thanks for coming around. All right, so Convict, Fleabix, Oracle, uh, Psych, and whoever's behind Psych there. Rise, thanks for taking the time <laughs> and signal. Really appreciate you guys coming by, talking in stations. Thanks for having us on Convict stream of CCP stream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I ended up producing in the end. So like, well, you did was... produce it. Thanks. All right. Uh, that's all we have time for today. We will see you next time on Talking in Stations. Yeah. Proper. <laughs>